<laughs> Talk you through moments here. So moments are sometimes called the turning effect of the force, the ability of a force to make something turn a corner. Or they're sometimes called torque, and that's what you actually talk about when you talk about cars. You talk about pounds feet of torque. Pounds is the unit of force in this case, and feet is the unit of distance. In physics we use newtons as the unit of force and meters as the unit of distance. And we get a moment in newton meters. So there's our equation there, m is fx, force times distance. You must remember that the distance is the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the pivot. So let's have a look at this example here on the right. Let's think about pedals. The uh, horizontal pedal is, has a greater turning effect, a greater moment, because the perpendicular distance x is greater. The force you're using is the weight that you're pushing down with on the uh, pedal. The second example, when the pedal is at an angle, you have less of a perpendicular distance, so you get less of a moment on the pedal. So if we're talking about balancing objects, well, it needs to actually satisfy two conditions. It needs to satisfy the condition where the sum of the clockwise moments equals the sum of the anti-clockwise moments. So I've done a really simple um, seesaw here, uh, fulcrum we would call it, two forces turning around one pivot. I've got one newton force on the left, one metre away, and a two newton force half a metre away. So force times distance means one newton metre on each side. Therefore, we have the, um, the equilibrium condition of equal moments satisfied. Also, however, for equilibrium, you must consider what you already know about forces. And this is Newton's first law here. The forces are balanced, therefore no acceleration. In other words, the upward force equals the downward force. So it means if we're just talking about forces in one dimension up and down, then we're, we're saying that the two downwards forces, 1 and 2 newtons, add to 3 newtons, and therefore the pivot has to be able to do a normal reaction force of 3 newtons. When you're dealing with uh, moments, you're always going to use the centre of mass of the object to give you the line of action of the force. Or if it's being acted on by gravity, we would call it the centre of gravity. Centre of mass for a symmetrical object, a simple object, is really easy. You, you just cross the lines of symmetry and you've got the centre of mass. That is for a 2D object of uniform uh, thickness or uniform mass density in, that, in the plane of the board here. If it's a non-uniform object, a funny shape, then you have to do something different. You have to actually suspend it from a pivot. I've done that on the right here, showing you just to remind you this experiment. You use a plumb bob, so a straight line down due to gravity. You hang it from different points, allow it to rotate freely, and the line of that plumb bob, somewhere along that, will be the centre of mass. So we say the centre of mass always hangs below a pivot in gravity. So you cross them, as I've done on the top one here, to get the centre of mass of a regular shape. A regular shape. But you must remember that there are times when the centre of mass is somewhere where there isn't actually any mass at all. That's why we say the centre of mass is where the mass can be fought to act from. It's always the mass that we do, uh, we're working with when we're dealing with forces. It's always where we draw any forces from um, when we're doing three free body diagrams. So just to briefly talk about st stability, if you want a stable object you need to have a low centre of mass and a wide base. You can see the object here is not going to topple on the left. It's going to fall back to its original position in the middle diagram there because the weight is within the base. And on the right the sum of all the forces is actually over, is in the clockwise direction because the weight is outside the base so it's going to fall into a new position. At the bottom here on the left I have a stable equilibrium where the centre of mass is below the pivot and an unstable equilibrium where the centre of mass is above the pivot. In both cases, the um, moments, this anticlockwise moment, equal the clockwise moments, so they're both in equilibrium, but the unstable one, if it does topple, will fall into a new position. So we call that an unstable equilibrium.